Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Arena Battles 1, an expansion for Escape from Stalingrad Z and Escape from Project Reza. In this expansion, you'll be able to use all your miniatures from those games, and now you can go player versus player as you recreate small scale engagements between groups of survivors during the first years of the World War II zombie outbreak. Now, Battle Arena 1 is not a standalone game. You are going to require one of the base sets to play it. And also, it's a good idea to learn the rules from those sets first. I'll be using the Project Reza base set, and that's going to give us everything we need to play alongside all the components that you'll get in Arena Battles 1. OK, let's get started then. So I'm going to take you through an introduction to the game. Then we'll look at some changes and new rules that are specific to this tactical skirmish game. Then we'll have a look at creating a team and playing as part of a campaign. Before moving on, having a look at the scenarios, the setup, zombies, round trackers, and finally the drop charts and searching. If you saw the other videos I did for Project Reza, you'll know it's a solo co-op game. But Arena Battles is player versus player, but you'll also be going up against the zombies, so you'll be playing against the AI that you're familiar with from that solo play. The scene is set in the first years of the World War II zombie outbreak, and these are going to be staged literal arena battles between teams of slaves, gladiators and ghouls in the free cities of the wasteland. As we're going into more of a player versus player skirmish now, there's going to be some changes that are specific to arena battles. In particular, there's some changes to initiative, instant healing through actions and zombie movement. In Escape from Project Reza, the grenades rules were updated and so we're going to be using those updated rules in this game. So if you're coming from Stalingrad Z, just important to note that those have changed. Let's have a look at creating a team and you're going to see a lot of differences here as we put together a hero, a specialist and three troopers. But our first job is to pick a faction and you can choose one that you feel fits your playstyle. Each is going to come with its own benefits and drawbacks as each has a limited amount of skill trees it can access. Once you've chosen your faction it's time to pick your hero which will be your leader. You can see here I've got an example of the team control sheet. But if you're starting from scratch or want to design your own, you'll roll on the leadership skill table and then roll one more time on any of the other skill tables and then write those down on your team control sheet. Each team will also start with one specialist. So when you start your first team, you'll roll on the specialist table to see which specialist they will be. And then they'll have the starting skill that's assigned to them in the chart. Next, you'll pick your three troopers, but they won't be assigned any skills. Now you've put your team together, it's time to head to the market. And this is where you're going to find all your provisions, gear, weapons, medical and other services. And also a place to sell or trade salvage and loot that you gather through the missions. In the market section, you'll find all the tables for the different weapons and gear that you also found in Project Reza or Stalingrad Z, but now they're going to be assigned a cost value. You'll find a selection of universal charts with items that any faction can use, but some factions have charts of their own that are specific to them. At this stage, you're ready to play your first game, and they recommend playing bank job scenario from the rulebook. But if you want to go further, you can start diving into the campaign rules. And this will take you through recruitment, contacts, a base camp, the armory in much more detail. If you play a campaign, you're going to need a campaign record sheet. So print that off and then you'll be keeping track of achievements, any items you've gathered, the fate chart, which includes injuries and also the special events. On top of that, you've got experience, which includes handicap bonuses, collecting income and prizes, gear tax, campaign victory conditions and healing. You'll notice that there's lots of different scenarios and missions, including team deathmatch, capture the flag, the big score, scavenger hunt and rescue. Each scenario comes with an introduction. You've got the round track the setup instructions, your objectives, spawns and drops, and special rules, as well as your victory conditions. 
When you've selected a scenario, in this case we're going to be using the bank job, it's time to set up. And there's a series of instructions to go through. First you have to set up your team, then you're going to be placing any doors and spot terrain, also loot drops, and then we're going to be looking at the zombie pool. You'll determine the zombie pool by rolling on the zombie pool chart. All numbers in this chart refer to markers, so you'll roll 1d12 and add the average number of games teams have played to the die result. The zombie spawn points are where zombie reinforcements will arrive. You'll gather all 10 zombie spawn markers and shuffle them number side face down and each player randomly chooses a number of spawn point markers as instructed on the chart. Then there are the zombie start points, and these are where the onboard arena zombie forces begin. Just like when we put our team together, you can use the miniatures and zombies from the previous games, including the Alpha Primes, Betas and Omegas. With the zombie pool decided, now it's time to check the objectives, the special rules, the victory condition and get started with the game. Each scenario will come with a round tracker and you can roll for it randomly if it's not included in the scenario already. Each round track will tell you where and when to spawn zombies and how many. There's one more thing to look at and that are the drop charts and these describe contents of crates that are dropped or left behind in the arena by the promoters or those who have previously occupied the premises. It depends on the arena. When a team member moves adjacent to a drop marker, roll a d12 to see the contents and then consult the drop charts. There will be times where you can also search for random contents in objective squares and search locations. Carry out a search action, roll the dice and then consult the relevant search chart to see what they found. The arena battle set will give you three double-sided game mats to play on. These are really fun and here's the one that we'll be using in the game. You've also got the option to play on the tabletop using 3D terrain and using measurements instead of the grid system. This is going to give you total freedom to play it as you would any other tabletop skirmish game and there's a few rules that just help convert from the arena battles grid rules to the tabletop rules. That's now covered the rules for Arena Battles 1 and hopefully you've enjoyed this introduction. This is part of their Game Found campaign that you can add on and select as one of the tiers. The game will include three double-sided maps and these are 16 by 20 inches. You're going to get the rule and scenario book, player reference aid, four punch boards, six plastic standees, three 12-sided dice, six status dice and PNP set. And just a reminder that this is not a standalone game. You will need one of the base sets to play. That will be Escape from Project Reza or Escape from Stalingrad Z. And I've covered both of those games here on the channel. Definitely recommend going and have a look at the How to Play series and videos that I made for those games. And that's going to give you a good introduction to the mechanics. And then once you've got those weighed up, you can then move on to Arena Battles and start looking at the special rules and then adapting it for the tabletop. I'll put some links in the description down below where you can go and find out more about Arena Battles 1. Also Escape from Stalingrad Z and Project Reza on the Raybox website. And if you want to check out Game Found, I'll put a link to that as well. So you can choose the tiers and find out more about all the different options for the games. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked the video. hope it was helpful. I'd love to know what you think about this, how it takes it from a solo game and then adapts it to a tabletop skirmish PvP game. Let me know in the comments down below. But for now, thanks again. If you liked the video, it'd be great if you hit the like button, subscribe for more videos like this one, and I look forward to seeing you here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. A massive thank you to all my Patreon supporters for helping me keep going with these regular videos. And if you'd like to support the channel and get some great perks, then I've put a link down below that will take you to our Patreon page where you can have a look at everything that you get there, including missions, quests, expansions that we publish for our games like Population Z, Lunaria Chronicles and more. We're on a mission to grow our Patreon now as we're developing more games with more expansions and we'd love it if you'd come along for the ride too. Links down below, be great to see you there.